Hey everybody, uh, it's a cold day here in New England, so we're gonna make a couple loaves of bread. Uh, I'm gonna make an Amish sweet bread. One of them is gonna be sweet, and then one I'm gonna cut back on the sugar a little bit and just make a standard white bread. It's the same recipe, it's just a difference in the amount of sugar that you use. I'll go over the different ingredients and how I make it. I'm gonna make it the lazy way. Most people don't complain about that. Uh, and I'll explain why we're doing what we're doing as we, as we go along and make the bread. I'm gonna start adding the ingredients. I'm gonna go through this fairly quick, but the recipe will be down in the description and also we'll have the recipe on our webpage. Um, so I'm gonna start with three cups of all-purpose flour. If you wanna use bread flour, you can. Uh, with this recipe, it really doesn't matter. So we'll get three cups of flour in here. And also I'm gonna be mixing the ingredients uh, in an order that some people may not agree with, but because I'm whipping this up using a food processor, nothing's gonna sit long enough. The sugar, the salt isn't gonna kill the yeast, so I'm not worried about that. So with this recipe, this is gonna be the sweet bread. I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup of sugar. If you wanna make standard white bread, just have that. Just do two tablespoons of sugar instead of a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And again, it doesn't have to be extra virgin olive oil. That's just what I happen to be using. You can use olive oil, you can use canola. You could probably even use butter. It's just gonna change the flavor a little bit. I'm gonna do about two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And this is just regular active dry yeast. Uh, you can also use a packet, is about two and a quarter teaspoons. And then right on top of that, and this is the part that's gonna make some people cringe, I'm just gonna put one teaspoon of salt right on top. And it's not gonna affect the yeast because we're mixing this right up. And then the last ingredient, I'm gonna put in one cup of warm tap water. Not hot, not cold, just warm. And then I'm gonna put this on our food processor and blend it up. If you don't have a food processor with a dough blade, you can use a kitchen aid with a bread hook, or you can knead it, mix it, and then knead it by hand. If you're gonna do that, give it a good five minutes of kneading, because we wanna break up the gluten on this quite a bit. So it's gonna take a really good kneading. We just finished up at the food processor and also this would be let's say i was kneading this by hand this would be where i'm finished with my kneading i've done five minutes of kneading and i've got a very smooth dough it's 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 very uh well mixed it doesn't have any weird chunks uh the gluten's really broken up in it so it's it's stretchy if i if i were to flatten this it pulls itself back together again if I put my finger in it and pull my finger out, you can see it comes back up. That's kind of what you're looking for on the dough. Um, you can either work on a floured surface. I've got one of these really cool uh, silicone mats. I'll put a, a link for this down in the description. These things are awesome. Uh, I don't have to use a floured surface, so I'm not putting any extra flour on my, my dough. Uh, so it's gonna stay exactly as it is. It's not gonna get any more dry. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is just kind of work this into a little ball. I'm gonna get a pan for the first rising, throw a little bit of oil in here, just kind of spread the oil around. If you've got a spray oil, you could use that too. Just so that the dough doesn't stick to the pan when it rises, because when it does, it's gonna get really sticky. Uh, so I'm gonna put this in here, and a little trick that I use is I take a, a shower cap, Throw that over my pan to keep it covered. And then for rising, uh, what you could do, especially on a cold day like today, we've got the wood fire going, so I could probably rise it over near our stove. Uh, but if you have an electric stove, or even if you have a gas stove that has an electric light in it, 
turn the light on inside of the stove, put your dough by the light, close the stove, and it should raise the temperature to almost perfect. And also being in the stove, you don't have to worry about your cat or anybody getting in there and messing with it. Uh, so I'm gonna let it sit in there for about an hour. The dough should about double in size. And then once that's done, we'll come back and finish up the process. Now that our dough has doubled in size, what we're gonna do is uncover it. We're gonna punch it down. We're gonna take it out onto our table and we're going to get it cut up into 12 separate pieces. Today, I'm gonna to take those 12 separate pieces and each one of those is gonna be cut into three because we're gonna be making sweet clover rolls with those. So let's get started on this and get that going. So we're gonna get the cover off and I'm gonna punch this down the way my mom always used to. I always wondered if she was just getting some frustration out because of all of us kids or if this was just what she learned from her mom, but she always just took and gave it a nice punch in the middle and then we are gonna take it out and drop it onto the tape. With a little help from some video magic, we're gonna get this cut up into its 36 individual pieces and I'll be right back. So I have two of our jumbo muffin pans already pre-greased and what I'm gonna do is take each of these groups of three, put them into the muffin tins and then I'm gonna put them back in under the oven light so that they can raise for another half hour. Now, the reason I'm using these is because they do raise quite a bit. I like these, so you just put them in, press down on them so they join together in the bottom of the pan. Let me get all these in and I'll be right back. I'm not too worried about these being exactly broken into three because I'm putting them all back together in the pan anyway. It's more just for the look of the clover leaf roll because it gives you a roll that is gonna break apart into three pieces when you serve it. So we get these all set, make sure they're all pressed down into the bottom. We're gonna put these back into the oven under the light for another 30 minutes and then they'll be ready to go in the oven. So this is the standard white bread mix. And as you can see, it rose very nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna punch this down. I'm gonna roll it out into a log and I'm gonna put it into my cast iron pan, which has also been pre-greased. So we're gonna punch it down. We're gonna take it out. Roll it out into a log. Now anywhere where you have seams what I'm gonna do is put this kind of so I know I've got the length that I want. And if I wanna bring any seams in to have it the right length, you wanna make sure you get those down on the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna put that in, gonna press it out into the bottom of the pan so we have it fit in there nice. And then this is also gonna be put aside and let raise for about another 30 minutes. So the bread has risen nicely. We've had our 30 minutes go by and now we're going to take this loaf and we're gonna put it into our preheated 400 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. And when it gets golden brown, Time may vary a little bit depending on your oven, so keep an eye on it. Then we'll be taking it back out. So we're getting it in the oven now, ready to go. So while the bread is baking, I'll give you a peek at how our clover rolls are doing. So this is that sweet bread that we did first and made into a whole bunch of little balls and put into the pans. So I'm gonna keep these covered so they continue to rise while the bread is baking, and then these will go in the oven and that'll be our next step. So I'm not doing this one as a split top loaf, but if you want, you can use a very sharp knife, cut straight down the middle before you put it in the oven to bake. Give that about 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll be back. Well, the loaf looks like it's ready nice and golden brown. I'm gonna bring this over to the table and we'll check it out. The loaf looks good, the color's good. Uh, 
give it a little flick test. It sounds hollow. It looks like it's ready. Uh, what I'm going to do, you can either leave it like this, let it cool a little bit before you take it out of the pan, and it'll have more of a crunchy crust to it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add a little butter to it because we like our bread soft. And what this will do is it'll soften the crust up a little bit so it's not like a French bread. It's more soft and, and chewy. It also adds a great flavor. So I'm just going to brush on some butter. And then I'll let this sit for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes to cool just a little bit and we'll knock it out of the pan and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, we're gonna take the clove rolls and we're going to add these into the oven, same temperature. The cook time on these is gonna be 10 to 15 minutes. We'll check on those, they're smaller, so they're gonna cook and brown a little bit faster. And if you need to, depending on your oven, we can rotate these just to make sure that they brown evenly. I just knocked the loaf out of the pan. It looks great. It's cooked all the way around. Uh, I'm gonna let it cool before I try slicing this, but this is a great loaf to be used for like sandwich bread or for toast in the morning. Um, it's nice and soft, and because we butter the top, it's going to make the top a little bit softer. It won't be as flaky and crumbly. Um, we'll be back in just a minute with the clover rolls. Those should be done in just a few minutes, and Marilyn will take those out of the oven. We'll see what those look like. So the first batch of the extra large clover rolls are ready to come out. We're going to get these out of the oven and over to the table. All right, now that we have these on a rack, what I'm gonna do is the same thing that we did with the loaf of bread, and I'm going to just do a little bit of butter on the top of each roll to keep the top soft. I'm gonna give them just a couple minutes, and then we will get them out of the pans and onto the racks to cool. And we're gonna get another batch of smaller clover rolls put into the oven as soon as I'm done with this. So now that these are all buttered, I'm gonna get them out of the pan. Now what I have here, and I don't know if anybody else uses this trick, this is just a Tupperware orange peeler. So what I'm gonna do is use the smooth end. It's got a little dip on the end, and I just use that to help me pick the rolls up to get them out of the pan. It works great when you're doing muffins or anything that just gives you a hard time coming out of a muffin tin. So these look awesome, nice and brown on the bottom, nice and golden on the top. Now these also, these are great. We've made these for Thanksgiving, Christmas, for any holiday occasion for years. And you can put them in the freezer if you make them ahead, take them out, let them thaw the night before your event, and then just put them in the oven for a few minutes to warm them up. That works out really great. I'm gonna get the rest of these out and on the tray to cool. So now we have everything out of the oven. We have all the rolls in a pan and I'm gonna be covering those because we're taking those to an event tonight. And if I don't cover them, I'm going to start eating them. But the loaf of bread we've decided we're gonna keep at home for ourselves. So if I get those out of the way, we're gonna cut a piece off the end so you can see it cuts awesome it's a nice loaf um, it's it's still soft and airy but it doesn't have big holes in it it's a really really great bread to use for sandwiches or toast like Steve said um, and we'll be trying a piece of this shortly to have some lunch so I've got a sandwich made for Steve and a sandwich for me, and we're gonna go enjoy some of this bread before we have a lot of other work to get done later today. So until next time, everybody, remember if you have your favorite bread recipe, uh, whether it's sweet bread, regular bread, holiday bread, remember, share it in the comments. And until next time, everybody, take care. Bye. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoy our videos and want to help us out, please like this video and subscribe. If you know someone who would like our videos, make sure to share as this really helps our channel out. Again, thanks and see you soon.